Hi, it's Jan from Jack Trip. I want to talk to you about Soundscapes. Soundscapes is our incredibly powerful effects processor that you can use in any virtual studio that you create with Jack Trip. What makes it so powerful is that the audio is still transmitted in real time, meaning these effects don't add any additional latency. Um, and we as musicians want to preserve the ultra low latency sound, right? So essentially we're giving you a suite of super powerful effects that include reverb, compression, noise gate, and stuff like a metronome that you can use within your virtual studio to enhance the audio quality of your music. So I would say, let's just dive right in. All right, um, I just started a studio here and you can see I have selected Soundscapes, uh, the Soundscapes tab, which now allows me to look at all these individual links. And, um, and But let's start from the top. Uh, this little visualization here is actually pretty helpful. You know, we record stuff, everyone sends it to the server, then processing is being applied, and afterwards the audio is being sent out to everybody's headphones. So we can now basically choose how we want our processing to happen. We could just click on the remove links here, right, and, and not have any effects. Maybe let's start with that. So this would just mean we're taking each person's microphone input or, or instrument input, wherever you send to JackTrip, and then we don't do anything and we send it out to everybody else. Um, by the way, you can choose to hear your own signal coming back by the self volume slider. So if you turn that up to 100, that means you get 100% back of that signal that you sent, um, the process signal, right, after processing. But some people don't like that. I personally like to turn it off. Maybe it's great for testing, but I like to turn it off eventually because I use some direct monitoring on my audio interface if I want to hear myself. I'm mostly interested in, in listening to the other people. What else is here? There's the master volume, of course, which is basically just a multiplier, um, also in percent, right? So 100% just means we don't add anything or subtract from the volume. Basically, all the signals just come together and um, and we have a, a normal volume. But, you know, sometimes people are a little bit quiet. If, if everyone is quiet, then uh, it might make sense to turn it up. Sometimes we have it at 150, for example. So feel free to play with that. Um, but up here, there is another important thing, which is this menu where we have created amazing presets for you. Um, and I want to just start by, what do we, we're, let's choose music class. Um, and so, when I hit that, it basically asked me, hey, you got to save your preset, right? Because I have done stuff here. Essentially, I've just deleted things, so it doesn't even matter to me. But if I had done something important and then maybe by accident, um, without saving, had selected a new preset, I could click the Download Now button and it would download a JSON file, um, which is essentially sort of my configuration here. Um, but I have downloaded it. I'm going to proceed now. So now it loaded my music class preset. Note that uh, I can upload my downloaded version here by just clicking the little Upload Soundscapes configuration. Um, so, so once you look for these presets, which by the way come with, with tooltips as well, so you can get more in, in detail there. Once you've downloaded them, you now will see these individual links here. Um, that basically are a part of this preset. So why do we need an input signal chain and why an output signal chain? Why do we differ between that? Um, it's just, you know, some instruments might want individual uh, processing um, and, and some stuff is just, just makes sense on, on the sort of master chain, right? Because for example, a reverb, um, let's look at that. Yeah, we, we have convolution reverb, for example, on the output, but I don't think we actually display that on input, no. And that's just because, um, you know, w once all the signals are together, then you might want to put them in one room, right? So you don't need to individually apply that reverb to, to each input. That's all. Um, but essentially, let's look at the, the, the input chain now, which is, again, what applies to every individual connecting client. And um, the first thing I want to I wanna mention here, because this is important, is circular pan or pan or vertical pan. Essentially panning, right? left and right. Now, 
if you are a band, let's say, and you all connect with, you know, mono, like for example, a microphone or a guitar, you know, if, if nobody sends stereo signals, then you need to have panning because it just makes things easier. It basically says, let's choose circular pan, for example, with six slots. Yeah, maybe you're less than six people. Um, that's fair. It basically says, okay, for each client that's connecting, we're going to give them one out of six positions between here and here, right? And so we're filling up the space. So we're, you don't need to worry about panning yourself. You can just come in on input one or two. We're taking each channel, we send them to mono, and we choose a new location. Um, in, in this case, spatial audio, which sounds great on headphones. Um, but... There is a, uh, this is important because if you are sending stereo, if, if all of your bandmates, for example, are sending stereo, then this would be the wrong thing to put on the input chain because it basically sums your stereo channels to mono, right? Getting rid of that stereo information and, um, and then positioning that stereo in, in like a, a mono, a new mono sound source. So uh, long story short, circular pan is great if you have people that are, not sending stereo, but if you're all sending stereo and you're doing the mixes on your, you know, your mixing board, for example, then you don't need to worry about these circular pan effects. Um, all right, let's just leave this on because most of the time people don't have these mixing desks and, uh, and let's go for something else. A noise gate. Okay. Um, a noise gate is, is, is a fantastic and in my opinion, really important tool. Um, it essentially looks at each uh, input um, each client, right? Because we're on the input signal chain. And so, for example, if the guitarist is not playing, then their signal falls below this threshold that you can set. You can say, you know, I want to gate it away very early, even if you play something very quietly, I don't want to listen to that. Or I want to hear a lot of stuff and only if it falls below minus 74 decibels, I want to get rid of it. But essentially, you're setting this threshold and every time the signal is quieter than what you set here, um, it basically uh, gets rid of that signal. So you don't, you don't, you don't listen to the noise anymore, right? The, the stuff you don't want is getting filtered out, essentially. There are some additional things like how, how quickly do you want the, the gate to, to sort of come in and, and how quietly do you want it? I usually set it to something like 1.6 or 1 1.8 um, because then it's, it's not just cutting off super quickly. But at the same time, it's it's kind of smoothly going down, and it's just keeping it's keeping it clean. It's keeping our signals clean. Um, another thing I want to talk to you about is a compressor. A compressor is is, is a really important tool in in music uh, mixing, and I actually recommend to have a compressor also on the output signal chain. Um, but a compressor essentially also looks at the volume of uh, a signal and then says, oh, if something is louder than this threshold, for example, louder than uh, minus 21 dB, then we're going to compress it, meaning we're going to make the stuff that goes beyond our threshold a little bit quieter than it would actually be. So if you're playing like a solid drum beat and then, you know, it's it's kind of here, maybe for the drummer, and it's like, doom, duck, doom, doom, duck, and now comes a super loud fill, doom, do, 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 right? And the volume would go beyond the threshold, then we would compress it with a, with a certain ratio. So everything that goes above this threshold is being compressed in this case, two to one, not very strongly. We could even go for something like six to one. So for every six, every six decibels that go above the threshold, it actually makes it only one decibel louder, which is interesting. Um, because you know, it's, it, it, it basically, it basically controls the dynamics. So noise gate and compressors, and limiters as well, which we have. I'm going to talk about it in a second. These are important tools to sort of um, control your amplitudes because you know how instruments can be very dynamic sometimes, and we want to we want to control that a little bit. You can set how quickly the compressor sort of comes in, and also how how quickly it lets go. I'm a fan of 10 to 20 milliseconds only for the attack, and I like to keep the release relatively short as well. Um, and the output volume just helps you to, you know, once, if you compress a lot and then everything gets quieter, you might want to make up for that by increasing this output volume again. 
But yeah, I would say handle with care um, this, these compressors. Th think about also putting one on the, on the output chain, a conservative compressor, maybe with a th threshold of something like minus eight and then a low ratio. But, you know, it just helps if, if you all play together and there's a loud passage, you can help sort of not, uh, not introduce clipping by, by lowering it in advance a little bit. Um, and once, since we talk about that already, let's, let's check out the limiter. So I like to put a limiter at like minus three dB, just like as a, as a sort of, uh, uh, seat belt, right? It's like the, the last thing you, you want to have there is like, well, maybe a, a relatively quick limiter actually with, with a quick release just to, um, to catch those transients, to catch the really loud things in the signal and then lower it before it goes into digital clipping. We don't like that. By the way, you can also see if you have digital clipping by looking at the view, uh, sorry, uh, at the um, view meter here, the studio output volume meter. And um, you can see I have clipped before, 17 minutes ago, I, it looks like I had clipped. Um, and if that happens, you might wanna think about lowering your gain or, um, or introducing a limiter or compressor. What else do we have available here? Um, a bandpass filter is, is great sometimes. You know, th think about a choir, for example. Um, male singers don't go lower than 100 hertz and female singers usually are uh, not lower than 200 hertz, right? So if, if you're, for example, doing choir sessions, you might just want to cut off everything below a certain hertz, um, a certain frequency. Um, if you are obviously, you know, if you're a band, you obviously want, you want the kick drum to hit you hard. So maybe you're going to set it to something as low as 20 hertz. Um, this basically just dampens the audio signal. Think about, th think of it as like a, a high cut filter that just gets rid of, of high frequencies, which I don't normally use. I want to keep my high frequencies. Let's look at the equalizer here. The equalizer is kind of cool because um, you can basically choose a frequency and then say, okay, this is a little bit, you know, may maybe a, a low rumble or something. This is annoying me. And so you can just take out a little bit of that frequency range. You can also say if you want sort of your bell curve, your frequency range to be very narrow because it's only one frequency that's annoying. Or if you want to, you know, make it a little bit broader to sort of cut out more than just, um, than just that one frequency, but maybe a, a whole range of frequencies in, in that area. Okay, let's look at volume. Volume, for example, is just a simple louder and quieter, not, not too special of an effect, but can be handy sometimes. Um, there's more panning, which we've already talked about one of them. These are just different ways of, of panning things. Um, let's look at the metronome. The metronome is cool. The metronome, you can just set a BPM and, um, and you can also set its volume and it will just... I think it's like a, a noise that is just being triggered at a certain tempo. Nothing too fancy, but you might wanna wanna use that for, for finding the right tempo. Now a tuning note is pretty cool. It outputs a certain frequency. So if you've got your guitar or whatever, you're, if you're a singer, you know you might just wanna get an idea of what how high an, uh, a note is. And then uh, once you know, you're probably gonna wanna get rid of this link again because um, otherwise you will have that frequency constantly. I think that's it on the input chain. Let's quickly look at the output chain. What else can we work with here? We have a reverb, we have also a noise gate. Maybe you want the noise gate on the master instead of the input chains. I like it on the input chain just because if one individual doesn't play, um, but somebody else does, then you know, the, the noise gate, since it individually applies, it only gets rid of the noise from that one person who is not playing anyways. And so the person that is playing will continue to be playing without their noise gate being active. So I think the noise gate on the master is something um, that, that might only be necessary if you, know, if, if you really want to save CPU resources or if, you're, if your load here is, is already super high. Um, but what else could be done on the master? Let's let's choose my favorite reverb here, um, the convolution reverb, and that's going to be the last link we're going to take a look at. This convolution reverb allows you to choose a space. Um, maybe we can uh, choose the uh, a diffuse plate, or maybe a stage hall here. And now you can set the dry wet balance, meaning how much reverb do you want uh, on your signal. And uh, I like to go for something pretty small, something like 
three or, f or four even um, because you know it is just that little aesthetic and I like to keep the the sort of drier um, signals right there while just sort of giving a subconscious idea of a space um, which does sound great especially when using headphones make sure that you think about cutting off the low end from the reverb so this bandpass remember when we looked at the bandpass filter this is kind of the same thing but it's just um, basically cutting off frequencies from the reverb so some people like their reverb to be a little bit more um, dampened so you can take some some of the high frequencies off here um, and but I, I also always worry about the bass right if you don't want to send your kick drum into a space and then have it be super boomy and, and muddy so maybe just cut off um, something at around 100 hertz um, and you don't need to worry about that all right um, I hope you've learned a thing or two I heavily recommend to just try it out on your own because you'll learn a lot and um, and it's fun and we do appreciate your comments and feedback so please let us know how it goes for you if you have any questions even even stuff you like certain presets you like um, because then we can make these presets better for you and that's what we would really like to do so happy soundscaping and happy jack tripping. See you.